Well, Obamacare, third and final day for the court to uh, have um, hearings and oral arguments on Obamacare happening right now in Washington, D.C. And to talk about Obamacare, we're joined by Professor William Jacobson, who's an associate clinical professor of law at the Cornell Law School at Cornell University. He also has the website legalinsurrection.com. Professor uh, Jacobson, welcome back to the program. It's great to have you with us. Great, great to be back. Well, you've had a chance to follow this last couple of days. Maybe you could give us um, your um, preliminary impressions of, of what you've heard from both sides the last couple of days. Well, there were two days of arguments. The first day was on the issue of whether, or primarily on the issue of whether the uh, penalty imposed is a tax and therefore within the federal government's taxing authority. Nobody seemed to really be buying into that. None of the justices from their comments seemed to be buying into it. And in fact, the Obama administration has walked away from that, probably for political reasons. The um, other uh, bigger issue was yesterday, which was the constitutionality of the so-called mandate, the requirement that everybody purchase uh, insurance or be subject to the penalty. The government is justifying that primarily based on the Commerce Clause in the Constitution, which gives the federal government the right to regulate uh, interstate commerce. And, uh, you know, the I, I'd say the overwhelming uh, pundit review of those arguments is that it did not go particularly well for the government, for the Obama administration. You know, I've gone through the transcript. You know, I think sometimes... The sense, the sense you get from an oral argument and the judge's questions can be a little bit of a false indicator. Uh, while I've never argued in the Supreme Court, I've argued in plenty of courts, and I think anybody who has done that would tell you that the questions the judges ask do not necessarily reflect how they're going to rule. Mm -hmm. But certainly if you listen to, and there have been plenty of sound bites played on TV and on the radio, the questions that were asked by the justices, particularly the so-called conservative justices and also Justice Kennedy, the so-called swing vote on the, on the court, there were very, very serious concerns about whether if the government can, if the federal government, which is a, a, a government of limited powers under the Constitution, the federal government can only do what it's authorized to do, by the Constitution, if the government can do this, where does it stop? Exactly. And a number of the justices asked questions about what is the limiting principle in the government's position, in Obama administration's position, meaning what can the government not do if yeah. it can do this? And there was never a really good answer for it. Yeah. And, you know, everybody is criticizing the Solicitor General for bumbling and stumbling and mumbling. But, you know, I'm sure he's a very fine lawyer. The, the problem he has is that he has a difficult case. I mean, it's, it, if you can force somebody to go buy insurance, somebody who's healthy, somebody who may not need medical care, and if you can force them to pay money under threat of penalty, you know, through the powers of the government, then what can't you force them to do? And that's the problem I think the uh, conservative justices and Justice Kennedy were we're grappling with. And maybe that that's the case, too, because government truly knows no internal limit. I'm, I'm always reminded when I when I was listening to this yesterday, this line of questioning back and forth, and uh, my mind raced back to an opinion by, I believe it was a Supreme Court in, in the Midwest. I think it, I, I can't recall, it might have been Michigan. It was the Michigan Supreme Court a few years ago that overturned an eminent domain case there regarding a uh, land that was, was taken for uh, for building an automobile plant, and they overturned the state's eminent domain laws. And the chief justice of their Supreme Court wrote that they needed to do this to ensure the property rights of individuals because government itself knows no internal limit to its own power. And I thought, wow, that really, I mean, I love the opinion, right? But I thought, boy, that really that really nails it. That's a great description of government at all levels having no internal limit. Right. Well, if the if the government can promote can force you to buy health insurance, is there any doubt that if given the power that somebody in the federal government would want to regulate what you eat, would want to do what Mayor Bloomberg does in New York City and tell restaurants how much salt they can put in food? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that goes to your point that but unlike state 
governments and local governments, which are really only restricted by the voters who elect them, the federal government is a is a a limited creation by the Constitution. It's it's it, you know the powers not enumerated to and not given to the federal government are reserved to the states. So the the question is was is there anything in the Constitution that empowers the federal government to force somebody to enter commerce, to force somebody to buy something. And I think that, you know, uh, Justice Kennedy had a question that uh, a lot of these questions, they're semi-statements, question statements, uh, which has been quoted a lot and, and cited a lot, where he basically said, you know, doesn't this, you know, isn't this different because it requires the individual to do an affirmative act? Is that, you know, you can't just sit at home with your windows drawn, your door locked, bothering nobody. Okay, the government is going to force you to do. The federal government is going to force you to do something, and that really, and Justice Kennedy put it this way, or in the form of a question, doesn't that really alter the nature of the relationship between the federal government and citizens? That you know, we're all used to the federal government regulating things we do and that affect interstate commerce, but we're not used to the government telling us to do something. And, and that's a, it's a very di- or, you know under penalty, and that's a very different change mm-hmm. in the relationship. I mean, is there any doubt that you know uh, under the guise of you know promoting the public health, uh, which would lower insurance costs, which would affect the insurance market, which would affect everybody, that that you know two or three years from now there will be regulations on what restaurants can can serve people? I don't think there's any doubt about that if they're allowed to go this far. And I, and I think that's the concern, that the inability of the government to articulate what a couple of the justices referred to as the limiting principle. Where does it stop? Right. This would be a plain English way of saying it. Where, where does it stop? And they can't really say where it stops. And, and you have to know, uh, uh, Professor Jacobson, that there are members of Congress on both sides chomping at the bit to be able to impose their their will essentially by fiat over the american people uh, you know that they, they, they are hoping that the that if the justices uphold the mandate as being uh constitutional that there are people sitting in congress right now that have all sorts of ideas about things that that we ought to do in our daily lives and they intend to, to pass legislation to force it there's, there's no doubt about that you know i think that the, the and particularly if you look at um the Obamacare 2,000 plus pages, and there are going to be several thousand pages of regulations. You know, at some point along the way, they are going to be telling people you have to go to the doctor. They're going to be telling people, you know, uh, how that relationship is monitored. Now, none of that problem goes away if you get rid of the mandate. But I think it's just indicative of the, as you said, the almost insatiable desire of government to regulate. It is 20 minutes after the hour, 7:20. And William Jacobson, Associate Clinical Professor of Law at Cornell's Law School, is our guest with us here on Fox News Radio, talking about the Supreme Court looking at Obamacare. We're going to continue in just a moment. First, let's get a look at our traffic and weather together. We'll get a quick break in, and then we'll uh, come back and talk some more with uh, Professor Jacobson. First off, taking a look at your ride into work this morning, an accident, 156 at Castroville Boulevard in North Monterey County. We also have a vehicle stalled at Highway 1. And the Park Avenue off-ramp, that's northbound Highway 1. Our weather forecast for today, looking at temperatures in the 60s around the Monterey Bay area and a chance of a shower or two. And that's our traffic and weather together at 721. Back with more in a moment. Hi, thank you for calling Dataflow. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm looking for ladies that like dogs taking long walks on the beach. Sir, we're Dataflow Business Systems, providing solutions for all your printer, scanning, and faxing needs. Oh, I see. All right, she doesn't have to be a dog lover. Sir, we don't match up people, but we do match up the perfect solution for your office, large or small. We support a broad range of cutting-edge technologies that are sure to fit your business needs. Okay, so you like long walks? Dataflow Business Systems, 759-8760 or startdbs.com. Finally, an all-natural male enhancement product that really works and works fast. Now, when the moment is right, you'll be ready. Hero Tabs is a scientifically developed, doctor-recommended natural formula that's safe and effective. With Hero Tabs, you'll experience explosive, fast-acting results on demand. Hero Tabs works the first time, every time, and it's guaranteed to give you the performance edge in the bedroom. 
This is the product the drug companies don't want you to know about, but we do. That's why we're making this special radio offer. Be one of the first 100 callers and we'll give you a free supply of doctor-recommended hero tabs to put to the test. With 3 million doses sold, we know you're just a phone call away from the best experience of your life. This is a limited-time offer and supplies are limited, so call 800-520-1880. That's 800-520-1880. Guys, when she's ready, be ready with Hero Tabs. Call 800-520-1880. That's 800-520-1880. If you are a California homeowner who is struggling financially, you may qualify for up to nine months of mortgage payment assistance through a free federal program. Visit KeepYourHomeCalifornia.org or text HOME to 55678. Fox News Radio, 1460 AM and 101.1 FM, KION. Yeah, my, my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. Uh, we don't anticipate that. That is Congressman Hank Johnson out of the Atlanta area conversation with the Navy Admiral a couple of years ago about them increasing the size of the Marine uh, detachment on Guam, another uh, division, 15,000 uh, men and women. And so now that doesn't have anything to do with health care, but in this respect, if the Congress, if the individual mandate is upheld and Congress has no limit over its power to order our lives, do you really want people like Hank Johnson deciding how you're going to live your life? Somebody who well, he just basically displays a fundamental ignorance of, uh, of how the earth was put together and what constitutes an island. 724 is our time. Professor William Jacobson visiting with us. He's a clinical law professor at the, uh, at the Cornell Law School, and he's with us uh, till the bottom of the hour. Professor Jacobson, one comment I heard yesterday that said one of the reasons why Kennedy, as the swing vote, may go with the conservatives on the court to strike down the individual mandate is that if it's upheld, and you talked earlier about changing the, you know, Justice Kennedy talking about f- changing the fundamental nature of the relationship between the people and the government, that this essentially destroys federalism as we know it, our system of federalism. Does he want to go down in history as the judge that, um, that, that redefined what federalism is or essentially did away with federalism? Well, you know, uh, I... He has been the swing vote on a a number of issues over the past few years, and this would be obviously uh, among, if not the biggest, uh, swing vote he is going to cast. And, you know, I'm going to assume that he'll do it based upon what he thinks the right result is, but I think any judge has to have in the back of his or her mind, you know, their legacy. I mean, is this how they want to be remembered? Uh, And, you know, I, I don't know that this is how he would want to be remembered. Uh, you know, how much of an influence that would have on him, it, you know, it's very hard to predict. I, you know, he seems like a, a very straight shooter, so to speak, and that he would, you know, reach the decision he thinks is the correct decision. But I think any judge has to wonder, am I going to be the one who creates this unlimited power in the federal government? Uh, you know, and uh, hopefully he will keep that in mind. Now, if the court strikes down the individual mandate, it said that, that the rest of Obamacare would necessarily have to fall, or even if they, if they said, well, the rest of the law is constitutional, um, but the individual mandate uh, is not the, uh, the, the, the penalty, or the tax is, is actually a penalty and not a tax, and so the Anti-Injunction Act doesn't, uh, doesn't apply here. Um, does, that, does that mean that the rest of the law stays in effect and, and can operate, or does does Congress actually have to end up reworking it? Because without the individual mandate, it can't at all, you know, exist, the entire law. You know, this is another one of those issues where the uh, Obama administration and the Democrats who put this through have tried to essentially play both sides. That Just like on the tax issue, it's not a tax because politically that's unacceptable, so they make sure they never call it a tax in the legislation. And Obama gives speeches where he says this is not a tax. Uh, and... Yet when it goes to court, they want to say it is a tax for legal purposes, and they've, they've really tied themselves in knots in court over that issue. And I think ultimately 
uh, they'll end up hurting themselves. But then you get into this whole other issue, which is they've told everybody the justification for the mandate is we need it, that unless we have everybody in the insurance pool, it, we can't 